talk about that in a minute. We can proceed with information items and other things. But before that, first, uh, I'm Rob McDonald, the Executive Director of the Pikes Peak Area Council of Governments. Uh, Brian and I are kind of going to run the agenda. Uh, since we don't have a quorum, we can't vote on chair or vice chair. He's the chair and the vice chair. Uh, I'll be the master of ceremonies a, a little bit. But we're really looking forward to get started with the technical side of the joint land use study. I uh, just got back from uh, National Conference uh, Association of Defense Communities. Boy, uh, joint land uses are going all over the country, Office of Economic Adjustment. They're funding all sorts of things. Uh, so I still have yet to debrief uh, the staff from all that great information that uh, I got from uh, all over the country. But for our little effort, first one in Colorado, we're, we're excited that you all could come out. Um, you may have been voluntold, uh, volunteered yourself, or just if you're not here for that meeting, you know, have some coffee and enjoy the, the, the rest of the information. But this is a, it's an effort where we really want to drill down a little bit and start to take advantage of your expertise uh, from all the, the four county-wide uh, experts that will be brought into this. Uh, certainly the policy committee, Matt, uh, they have a chair and a vice chair. Uh, they have bylaws, so they're, they're ready to go. So we need to start backfilling with the information from the technical side and, as you'll hear later, uh, some of the, the focus groups, the work groups, uh, that will drill down as far as they can go into certain topics. Uh, we'll cover some of that. So what I'd like to do is uh, maybe go around the, the room and the audience of one, Darren. Uh, well, there's, there's more in the back. Join us. Yeah, you can come on up. Yeah, you're not a quorum, so you won't be the chair. Uh, when you sit. Um, but, but I think it's important to, to know who's here representing uh, the different part of the, the spectrum. <coughs> So with that, I'll, I'll start with Brian, and, and we'll wrap around this way and then head into the audience of three. I'm Brian Potts. I'm the planner two of the joint land use study for PPACG. I'm Marshall Butler. I'm with the Fremont County Planning Department. I'm Larry Manning with the Town of Monument. I'm Bob Fant with the United States Air Force Academy. Dino Bonaldo with Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station. Chris Chapman. I'm the Chief of Planning at Fort Carson DPW. Christina Behrens with Peterson Air Force Base. Uh, Glenn Meske, Peterson Air Force Base. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Qual at Shriver Air Force Base. Devin Thomas, Shriver Air Force Base. I'm Linda Morgan, Director of Community Development Services for Teller County. Craig Dossi, uh, El Paso County. Darren Tangerman, Manager for Pueblo West. I'm Jeff Brown. I'm here on behalf of uh, Keith Berger, uh, BLM Royal Gorge Field Office. Angela, we'll go your way and wrap to. Angela Essing, I'm the manager of the Joint Land Use Study. Aaron Horsmeyer, Community Planner at Shriver Air Force Base. And I'm Tom Miller, I'm the geographer and analyst for the JLS project. Rachel Beck, Council of Great. So, as I said, we don't have a quorum. We need seven to make a. Uh, super ma or just a majority of uh, the members. So once we get that, we can get back to uh, some of the other items on the agenda. But um, do you want to walk through the agenda? And sure. We'll do non-action items and reports and sure. buy, buy some of your uh, compadres some time. So uh, looking over the agenda, is there anyone that uh, any, any item that anyone would like to add to the agenda under information or anything that isn't already covered? No one has anything additional. We'll start off. Um, uh, obviously, we're not going to be able to establish a quorum. Um, so, as mentioned, um, uh, we'll consider the agenda approved since I guess no one has any additions. Um, are there any uh, public comments from the uh, one member of the public, technically? I guess there is no members of the public here. Not yet. Uh, not yet. So we're going to start off by going through um, some reports uh, related to the Policy Committee in Monument Creek. Uh, the action items under number five, as mentioned, because uh, we don't have a quorum, we're going to have to skip those over. So there is going to be a meeting in April, and we'll attempt to get enough people here for a quorum at that point. And so those will be added to that agenda, which I will get to you guys uh, probably within the next two weeks. Um, and then we'll be going over some informational items, and uh, I'll wrap it up. So. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Angela She'll give you the report from the Policy Committee. Good morning, everyone. 
So we met last week for the policy committee, and that we had a great start. We actually, um, everyone um, but a couple were in attendance, and so we moved forward by approving um, the bylaws and the operating procedures. There was one change to those, which when you guys um, have a quorum and, and Brian goes over that, he can discuss that with you so that your um, bylaws and operating procedures can be consistent with the policy committee. We elected Commissioner Daryl Glenn, who is representing El Paso County as the chair of the policy committee. And we elected uh, Commissioner Tim Payne, representing Fremont County as the vice chair of the policy committee. We ratified the technical committee seats, so the ones you are representing today, they needed uh, approval by the um, policy committee. And in doing that, there were just a few changes that they had recommended. So you, you have the um, technical committee roster in your packet. I believe it's the very last page of your packet. And so some of the changes that they made to that were the air traffic manager from Colorado Springs, which I believe is close to the bottom of the list. It was noted that um, that representative should be an ex official member. And so we will be making that change, um, which means that they are um, a member on the board for discussion based on their position in another organization, but do not have voting rights. And a lot of this comes for federal employees um, as another designation for that. So um, we will be making that change. And then they had a recommendation to add several positions to this group, which we will be working on here before April and see what progress we can make on that. One of those positions was a representative from the DNR for the Parks and Wildlife Division. Another was Greg Dorman, who works for the state of Colorado. He's a resource director and legislative liaison. He, and he works for the Department of Military and Veteran Affairs. He also holds a seat on the policy committee, um, but the policy committee felt it was very important to have the represent, his representation on this committee also, so he will be added to this committee um, and doing double duty. And then they also rec recommended that we have somebody from Colorado Springs Utilities, so we will be looking at um, a finding a representative from there. And lastly, the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service will be looking for a representative to add to the committee from there also. There was quite a bit of discussion about having somebody from the Nature Conservancy sit on this committee. And as the discussion went, we decided that we would look at somebody um, from that organization to more than likely sit on a working group. So working groups will be the, your support to this committee. And um, so we think that that's probably the best place for somebody from the Nature Conservancy. When we, um, when we start to look at working groups in the future, they will come up through you. So the recommendations to form the working group will come from this committee, and then you'll make a recommendation to the policy committee. Um, starting this off, it's a little bit different in the sense that the policy committee needed to form to establish this committee. And then um, moving forward now, um, items will come from you to the policy committee instead of from the policy committee to you. So we also, at the um, policy committee, designated the Monument Creek Watershed Restoration Committee as the Joint Land Use Study Northern slash um, U.S. Air Force Academy um, Stormwater Working Group. And we'll talk about this shortly in more detail. I'll give you a, a summary of that working group. Yes. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> my experience uh, with projects and, and other, uh, well, just about anything we do, um, CDPHE is very involved in, in everything we propose or actually change. Um, do you, is there a, a feeling amongst everybody that, that they're, they're a big part of what we do and, and what we plan to do? And tell me what CDPHE is. I'm not sure. Oh, the Department of Public Health and the Environment. Oh. Okay. 
Okay. So I don't know. So if maybe you guys another organization we want to consider. And decided not to include them, or uh, no. I think I think one of the things is uh, with Greg Dorman and the state office, the Veterans Affairs. They want to funnel all a lot of that through there, even though other state agencies would be involved. Because uh, more of those are, if we're doing a, a, a an action, you know, eventually we'll have recommendations from you up to the the policy committee on what's what's the implementation. Mm -hmm. And so that's more where the Department of Health comes involved when you're starting to implement something. Um, and so I think okay. they, they're deciding that you know, for a planning study, we're probably not going to cross over into their lane. We might, okay. but again, uh, where, uh, if, if, if we go, go along and find that maybe working group needs to have a representation from there or any other folks around the state, uh, we can do that. Uh, but now I think the policy committee didn't see the need to add them specifically at this at this point. Okay. Doesn't mean they can't, but they didn't see the the need just yet. So, but I understand. Uh, you know, I understand the reluctance not to include them unless you have to. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and of course it may come in handy uh, with certain work groups where they may, that may be the best place to use them as a resource. And so it'll just kind of that may be where we end up. But these are some of the things that from the policy committee we're going to be looking at before our next technical committee meeting. And so at that point, um, you know, because it happened sort of before we could get any process for the packet, uh, we're going to take a look and talk to some of these people and try and figure out where is going to be the best place they can fit in with this process. Okay. So we'll note it, but other groups, let us know so we can tie them in if, yeah. if there's a, a connection that we need. Okay, and then the last thing that the policy committee approved was the public participation plan. And that is a supplement to your packets. You know what, I think I left it upstairs. Oh, yeah. Do you want to run in? Ra Rachel Beck with PPACG, she is our policy and communications director, is here to talk to us about that. And Brian's just running upstairs real quickly to grab you a copy of that plan. I do have it on the screen, Rachel, so if you want to. Yeah, One of these, oops. There are lots of tabs. I know there are, right, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Yep. Good morning, Rachel Beck, Policy and Communication Manager for PPACG. Um, we went through kind of a standard four-step planning process here to come up with our public outreach plan. And uh, the reason we went through such an exercise is we could just hold a few public meetings and call it good. Uh, but in a four-county area, if we really want to make this the community-driven process that OEA keeps telling us that it is, then we thought we probably needed to take a little more of a detailed approach. Um, so what we looked at, let's see if I can make this a little bigger so you can see it. You can minimize the right side. Where's the button for that? Middle arrow. And thank you. Aha, thank you. So we started off with a situation analysis and any research we could find just to give us an idea of the context in which we're communicating. And then looked at what are the goals and who are we trying to reach. Um, that's just to ensure that our message is received and acted upon by the right people. Um, then we have some strategies, and because we have such a large study area, that's nearly a million people, and reaching such a large group in such a short amount of time um, is nearly impossible. So what we've settled on here is a three-phased outreach strategy. We'll start by casting a wide net, and then as we get some feedback back about what the community is interested in, what the issues are um, that are on their minds, we'll start narrowing it down a little bit. Um, as we get more information. And we'll start out by doing that um, through a couple of primary tactics, which is next section here. Um, things like telephone town halls where we can reach thousands of people at once, web-based surveys, uh, map-based commenting form, things like that. Um, we're also looking at launching a speakers bureau in the next month or two that will help us get out to community groups and really expand our reach um, by getting that word of mouth going. And then the last section of our plan here is about evaluation, just so that we can make sure that 
we're reaching our goals or if we're not doing things aren't going how we think they're going we can respond to feedback and change accordingly so this plan will uh, evolve as we get more information and respond to what we're hearing from the community questions or comments on that Stunned you all into silence. That's it. Thank you. We're, we're glad the policy committee approved it. Uh, you know, a little bit uh, trusting us to get out there, but they'll uh, uh, guide us if we have to do some add additions to this along the way. If I may add just one little piece to this too, we are going through an RFP process right now to look for a planning consultant to help us with some of the responsibilities identified in this um, communication plan. I did um, send a copy of that to all the POCs, um, but if anyone knows of or works with uh, planning firms within your communities that would be interested in um, submitting to, for this RFP, it is on the front page of the PPACG website and or I brought some copies with me today too so you can see me after the meeting um, and be happy to any help with distributing those would be greatly appreciated. How, how is it advertised? How are you getting the word out that this option is available? So right now um, it is on, like I said, it's on our website and Rob just handed out 10, 12, 12 copies at um, the Yeah, the National OEA, Conference was the, the Association of Defense Communities. They met, there was 350 people, 90% were consultants. Uh, our, one of the speakers we had uh, from our local business alliance at the end of his session said, hey, we had just issued this RFP, go see Rob. And so I had a line that came over after that session. So, All right, so everybody's hungry. How are they going to find this other than the front page? And, and so in addition to that, <laughs> good question. In addition to that, we are looking at putting it on three websites. And um, one was the American APA, American Planning Association, and then two other were ones that Serena had given me from the OEA, and I don't have them in memory, but we will be posting it on all three of those websites, and those two are more military kind of websites. And so contracting vehicles, how do you do that, and who will make the determination based on what criteria? This is pretty yep. critical. This yeah, the... Yeah. the the criteria are listed in the RFP, and I'd be happy to give you a copy of that. Um, so the, criteria, the evaluation criteria is listed in the RFP, and um, we are looking at putting together a review committee to do that. And we believe that I think the recommendation of the OEA was to put somebody from the policy committee. Um, we could look at populating somebody from the technical committee on that review committee so that we do get a non-biased review. So we, it, there will be a review panel. Um, and it will all happen rather quickly. They were released on February 29th. I believe the due date is the 14th here in March. And we'll be looking at reviewing them that, that immediately that week after to get started. As Rachel noted, a lot of the um, Speakers Bureau items need to be started this month and next month and and Brian and I and Rachel will be jump starting some of that too this month and then it'll be complemented by the consultant so your, to do your that. So your review committee is your source selection board? Say that again. Here's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, what uh, Office of Economic Adjustment, that's the OEA, if you, just to make sure everyone knew that. They, they literally just approved this uh, RFP on Monday and it went out the door as fast as we could. A lot of firms have been tracking it but they also said use our local PPACG procurement process. And so it's very simple. Even though it's federal funds, we're allowed to use our process. And it's not as complex as many of yours. Uh, so we, we understand that. And so our, ours is our local process and uh, pretty straight, straight, straight up. And so in the RFP, yeah, obviously we say here's how the points are going to go. Uh, so uh, bring it on in. And so I think... We hope to get uh, six or eight. And from the announcement of the award of the JLA study to PPACG, there has been a lot of interest that has been directed towards Rob 
in being a part of the project. And so we have kept a, a small database of that interest, and I um, sent a direct email to all of them with the RFP attached also. Um, so. And I think for, for some that may not know, uh, there's been about 120 <coughs> joint land use studies done around the country. This is the first one in Colorado. But in, in our discussions with OEA, which started a year ago, we proposed to them do it differently, not just hire a consultant to do the whole thing. We were going to hire staff, and you've met the three that are leading it uh, with some other staff internally to do that. So uh, it's not just going to be the consultants just say, here's, you know, I won't even mention their names, but there's been two or three firms that have done most all of them. So OEA wanted to stretch, stretch it out a little bit and see if we could do something a little bit different. So that's uh, the way our board uh, agreed, uh, not the policy committee, because they, they came in after the fact. But I met with our OEA leadership yesterday. Uh, they're, they're still good with it. They're looking forward to it. But some of the consultants talked to me yesterday, too, saying, this is different. This is not do the whole thing. It's like do a segment of the joint land use study. So we have other RFPs that we'll put out for other expertise that we don't have. So stay tuned for that. But I, I think it's, uh, it's going to be a little different because we're doing it with internal staff using this technical committee, using the, the work groups and really doing it just a little bit different than uh, the 120 that came before. So I'm just kidding. But nice. Right. I just realized this wasn't in your packet. Uh, if, if, uh, many of this, uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, I was just realizing that in case you were curious about how everything worked out, um, some of you here I realized have not, you know, did not meet us with us initially and may not have seen this. So this is the general uh, outline in case you're wondering how everything out in terms of relationship, OEA, PPACG study sponsor, uh, policy committee, technical committee, and the working groups. Sorry, just wanted to throw that up there real quick. Oh, that's good. Both okay, are there, um, that concludes my policy committee update. Are there any other questions about the policy committee and or the information that I provided? All right. Then I will move on to the Monument Creek Watershed Restoration Project. And so this is included in your packet. I believe it is the um, second page of your packet, the third page if you have the agenda on top. And we are feeling incredibly fortunate to have such a project in our community at the same time that we are doing a JLA study. The, let me flip sides here really quick. I'm not sure how many of you would be familiar with the Fountain Creek watershed project that Larry Small and a group of um, represent, or community leaders recently finished. But this project is being patterned after that project. And the beautiful thing about this being our working group, in putting this together, the communities have partnered by backing this with a considerable amount of funds to study the issues. Our other working groups will not have um, the luxury of such funds, but we hope that they will be able to produce the same level of work. In this slide here, you can see that the Monument Creek Watershed Restoration Master Plan stakeholders um, are a wide representation of the community. Now, this watershed is centered around the... So that's in your packet. I'll just refer you to your packet slides. You can see the first color photo that you have in your slides or in your packets. These represent the watershed area. And you can see how the Air Force Academy is nestled right in the center <laughs> of that watershed. And so a reason that absolutely needs to be studied by the, by the JLUS study 
So it is a collaboration put together of the City of Colorado Springs, El Paso County, Colorado Springs Utilities, the U.S. Air Force Academy, and those four parties have put in funds to then hire Matrix Design Group to study this water they have been meeting for five meetings now, a little over six months. Their time frame for the project is a year and a half, so it will, it will conclude about six months before the scheduled conclusion of the JLA study, making it perfect timing for us to include a lot of those recommendations um, into the study. And right now, I will work on bringing it up, but right now they've done a really detailed inventory of that watershed and documented it through pictures um, and database gathering. They continue to put this together. It is available to the general public on an FTP site, and I will provide that to you in the minutes so that you can go to the FTP site and look at the work that's being done. Um, just give me one second, because I do want to show you this really quick, and I think I can pull it up here pretty quickly. Oops. So while that's coming up, any, anyone involved with that watershed study right now? I knew there was maybe a couple that should be. Yes, so, we are very involved. So you'll get a, you'll get a preview. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I've got uh, uh, Dr. Brian Milbachler is my representative uh, on this, and uh, he, uh, I look forward to attending a meeting with him every now and then, and also seeing how it works out through this group. Sure, and, you know, for the joint land use study, you know, stormwater, so that study and that working group is one issue. I think yeah. we're over 30 yeah. so far. Uh, we're not going to have the luxury, as Angela said, to have a $600,000 effort uh, for every single topic on our, our list. But we'll take it. I mean, sure. they're underway. And so, again, as we pull that in, we pulled all the studies that have gone on the last few years from all the installations, you know, tied to the issues. So we'll, we'll see how that, that goes. But this is a good one to start. I guess all the others have to live up to that. Yes. So... On the FTP site, they've currently uploaded some KMZ files that you can click on, and they've documented pictures of the damage that's happening within that stormwater area. This is, again, I will provide this through the minutes to the meeting, and you can click through these. This is specifically the area on the Air Force Academy, the Kettle Creek area, and then also up here you have some Black Squirrel Creek um, photos and to give you some relationship here this is Monument Creek coming through Zoom in a little bit this is a stadium at the Air Force Academy kind of a good point of reference so again this group will look at coming up with recommendations not only for the city of Colorado Springs for El Paso County also for the Air Force Academy and everyone to work together with um, the stormwater management of this area. As we dive into the it challenge, um, the issues that we've worked on through the matrix with all of the installations and continue to work through with the public comment, we will be looking at maybe the potential for needing a stormwater committee for the more southern area of our study area also. And we'll build upon that. So, again, just a brief introduction. Um, if there are any questions in regards to this, I can try to answer them, but what I may need to do is go back to Larry Small, the executive director of the project, and then we can include those in an email to you after the meeting in some summary. So any questions in regards to this? All right. Very good. Thank you. So uh, next, as I mentioned, uh, on the agenda would be the action items. Uh, so in, instead, at this point, we'll refer to these as the initial information items. Um, in your packet, uh, there's a, uh, a document that's um, titled Joint Land Use Study Technical Committee Bylaws and Operating Procedures. What I'd recommend at this point um, prior to our meeting uh, in April is just take a look through this, uh, see if everything um, is, uh, makes sense for you. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, and we will also send along um, 
the proposed edits from the policy committee into this uh, so that you have that. It was just a couple of minor uh, word changes, um, and I can just go over those real quickly. Um, in Article 1. Brian, can I get a copy of those? Oh, absolutely. Don't have those. Yeah. Uh, just so you have the reference as to what uh, the, the key changes were, in um, Article 1, which is page 3 of the bylaws, uh, Article 1, uh, B, install, um, I'm sorry, that's the wrong part. Yeah, B, under installation complex, in the second line, um, which is within the first sentence, the key change was just to change the word managed, um, referring to airspace managed by the installation, and change that to utilized. There is some uh, FAA had an issue with that. Um, and then also removing uh, the reference to the Air Force Policy Directive uh, language at the end of the document. Those are the only changes. So now you just have that in mind. That, that Other than that, the uh, Policy Committee was happy with the bylaws and procedures. Um, so review that. Talk to whoever you need to at your, um, your, your local jurisdiction or installation. And then let us know if there's any questions. So we'll leave that as an action item for the next meeting. Uh, once we have a quorum. Uh, and we will work hard to make sure we have a quorum so that I'm no longer running this meeting with an iron fist. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, and of course that means we'll also post postpone the election of chair and vice chair. But certainly think about who is on this committee. Take a look at the tec technical committee list so that next meeting uh, maybe you have someone you'd like to nominate or put forward uh, for chair or vice chair. In particular, anyone that's not here. Yeah, <laughs> those are the key. Because people. you can't vote, if you miss a meeting, you may yeah, be the officer. Uh, but if if we do get a quorum, we'll ask you to vote on that today. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So uh, with that, we'll move on to the some of the informational items. Um, first one is uh, if you turn uh, past the bylaws, um, past the technical committee member list. You'll see uh, a familiar sight if you met with us uh, during the uh, lead up to this meeting. You'll see the uh, Colorado Regional uh, Land Use Study Map. Let's see. I can probably bring this up here. Unfortunately, of course, we had to shut down the whole thing, so I don't have the documents open I need. But um, uh, if, we, if, if anything, we'll just refer to the packet for the moment. Um, uh, meanwhile, Angela, I think we'll try and get that up and running. But uh, as you'll see in the in the regional joint land use study map, again, four county region. Uh, note that we're going to have uh, five installations, as has been talked about before. Currently, Shriver is not officially added, but we expect that that will occur um, within the near term. So at this point, we're operating with Shriver um, in the process, uh, with the assumption that's going to be added by the DoD. Uh, You'll note that Pueblo Army Depot is shown on the map for reference. That is not part of this study. Um, so we don't have to uh, uh, be dealing with those issues uh, at this point. And then uh, moving to the next page, um, you'll see the fact sheet. There's a four-page fact sheet that we developed um, for the purpose of getting information out to the public, to other public officials. And uh, when we met with each jurisdiction, we brought that uh, to you to uh, give sort of a, an overview of what we expect to have as the outcome with this study. Um, so feel free to utilize that. that. That fact sheet is located on our website as well. Uh, there we go. So Would you want um, there's the map, and there's the fact sheet. The, the map, of course, is included in the fact sheet. But if you need to um, print it off, we do have it on our website if you need to hand this out to anyone within your jurisdiction or installation, anything uh, such as that. Thank you, Angela. With that, um, the other thing we'll move on to after the fact sheet. Now, this this is going to be familiar to some of you. This is the uh, uh, the entitled the JLS compatibility challenges. This is a matrix of all the different challenges. Now, we've only met thus far uh, as JLS staff. We've only met thus far in terms of installations with Air Force Academy and Fort Carson. We are going to be meeting next with uh, Peterson Air Force Base on March 17th. And so with um, 
Peterson, Cheyenne Mountain, and Shriver. As we have those meetings, we expect that this matrix will evolve and some additional challenges may be added or modified. Uh, but as it stands right now, this is sort of our working document to track uh, what issues we're finding either in military documents um, or, or as we meet with you, uh, challenges that you or the public identify. So we also expect that as we get public input, uh, the public input from um, uh, the surveys and online measures should inform us as to uh, are these issues, how, to what extent do we need to study them further, and of course we will communicate the results of that to you so that we can continue to update this and make sure that this matrix really does encapsulate the challenges, land use challenges that are, uh, we're going to be looking at. Um, any, any questions thus far? Or any new issues to add? Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the group, we haven't met with each and every one of you and, and drilled down. There may be more issues. Now, when, when all the installations did the nominations, I think we had eight issues to start. I think we're going to go well into the 30s. And so if you have them today, give them to us. If not, if you uh, come up with them whenever, you can email in as well. Because this, this will be a, a living, breathing, uh, hopefully not a monster document. Uh, hopefully we won't get to 100 issues to, to solve and uh, next two years. But have a look at it and there, there's some conditionals and asterisks and all sorts of notes that go with it. But we really want to just quantify what are those issues for the installations and what are the issues certainly with the community. And so that'll be, that'll, as we say, be an ongoing uh, list. Uh, I guess it'll get to two pages before long. <laughs> and uh, the second point with this is that each one of these there's a definition that is uh, a basic definition we have in that fact sheet. So if you're qu uh, wondering what each one of these items is really trying to get at, uh, that is in the fact sheet um, definition for each one. And of course, as we go forward, those definitions may evolve as well. There may be some language within there that once we get further into the draft study document, you may find that we need to change the wording cause, because the uh, current definition doesn't really encapsulate the entirety of that issue. So uh, did you have a question? What do we, as far as the capacity and some of the compatibility issues, how far out in the future are you guys looking to see if something is going to be an issue in the future? Do you want to answer that, or how far do you want to go? <laughs> I mean, I mean, some of the installations That's are like 2050. That's like spoken like a true director there. Yeah. I, um, the, the only reason I bring that up is because the, the big B word that's going to be getting tossed around here again in a couple of years, probably looking at the capacity and issues now. But if we have um, realignment and stuff like that that brings new mission to the installation which we constantly have that issue at Peterson when we don't have room to, to go yeah. but when we look at our full build out our blueprint 2050 the conditions now versus in that time frame are going to be way different sure and what reiterated yesterday with the installation command across the services was you know BRAC is you know they can barely see it out uh, in 2019, I think. I mean, a lot of folks are saying, you know, certainly the Air Force, we want the BRAC. We, need, we have 30 percent more stuff than we need, and we can't afford to maintain all this. But it's not going anywhere in Congress, as reported again yesterday. So the congressional folks don't want to hear about it, but for all the installations across the, the world, they've still <laughs> they've got to deal with uh, the, the budgets and what's going on. So what OEA said along those lines is, we re this is not to brack proof any installation. This is really say what's what's as far as we can see existing mission. They they don't want to let us and they won't let us be reimbursed for chasing mission uh, like UAVs. They said if it's not happening now, we're not going to really look into it or study it. So best we can determine for existing mission that all the installations, what impact across the four counties. That's really where we're going to focus on, because five years from now, who knows what the mission could be? I mean, Peterson could head into Manning Lewis Ranch for you know, 5,000 acres, 10,000 acres. Who knows? But we've got to deal with the as we see it now. Uh, certainly, the communities too. You know, I mean, we all know Manning Lewis Ranch is huge onto the eastern side of Colorado Springs. It's supposed to develop in 80s and 90s, and that's the 19, not the 2000. Uh, and so it hasn't and it's gone back and forth. So land use in the communities is still subject to variable uses and what's going on. So I think 
best case look at what the plans are. So 2050 is probably as far out as any of the plans I've seen. Uh, our regional plans, we're, we're going to eventually go up to 2050. But again, it can't be, we hope to have a mission at Peterson that's going to be this, and that may have an impact. They, they don't want to let us speculate too much. And I would just offer that we still have quite a bit of developable area in case anybody's worried that they're going to get hit. I'd be happy to share that with you. We keep trying to send people to Carson <laughs> yeah. and they keep coming back. <laughs> and, yes, and then, of course, the tie into that is that uh, clearly through this, we want to make sure that the strategies also, um, they address the issues that are currently uh, being studied at the time, but also that uh, don't do it in such a way that may hamper something that we think has a high likelihood of happening in the future. So certainly we can kind of build that into the process, but as Rob said, we really want to try and focus on what are the knowns uh, at this point. So. That'll work. Okay. Right, I have one, yeah. one, one issue on the compatibility challenges. Yeah. So looking at the, the Fort Carson and vibration, not, is that there before or has it been eliminated? I just, no, that's some that's something that we're certainly aware of with uh, you know with all the art artillery training. So um, yeah, that's that uh, column does should have uh, an X there because um, we we are aware that that there are some vibrations uh, with with mm -hmm. the operations there. Um, yeah, I'll make sure that's updated next time. I think this may have been a slightly older version. So the, again, this to this document's evolving sometimes faster than we can keep track of. Um, yeah, so I'll make sure that's it. Anything else that anyone feels should be added at this point? I've just got an administrative question. On, sure. on the website, is there a JLUS tab on the website or how is There's, um, and, and uh, Rachel, uh, did you want to, actually this might be a good time to talk about the website. What a segue. Yeah, because that is, that is the next item. There you go. That was an excellent segue. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. I'm glad we planned that out ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you my bill. All right. <laughs> I think Peter appears to be having issues. Uh, you, think there's a, you think we have Internet access. <laughs> Rachel, if you close... Um, Google Earth, that may help. Yeah, that may be causing uh, all of our, that may be the source of all our problems. Thank you. You can discard. Reset. Close it out and go back. All right. What's this button do? All right, apparently I'm going to have to talk to you about the website as a performance art. Um, but the information about Joint Land Use Study does live on ppacg.org. Uh, the top navigation bar. Oh, it likes you better. There. Thank you. There we go. It's a key for it. That's more like it. All right. All right. So across the top here we have our program areas. Here is the Joint Land Use Study. And we currently have up here information on the committees. You'll be going there frequently for your meeting materials. Uh, the library will house all of the documents related to this project. Right now, that's just the fact sheet. Um, maps will direct to a uh, interactive site that we're working on right now that will include a number of different maps and options, including um, the comment forum that we talked about earlier. So right now it just has the study area. Um, and then we've got a link to our calendar and the J staff. Um, so this will continue to evolve as we get more information, public meetings and so forth. And one of the things that the Office of Economic Adjustment wanted, they wanted it not to be a standalone website because in their experience those don't get maintained after the project's done. And it just kind of fades away. So they wanted to make sure it was on the Pikes Peak Area Council of Governments, our website, which should live on for a while. Uh, and that way, if you clicked under the military, you can see for the fans of the Fort Carson Growth Plan, it still exists. Um, so if you ever wanted to go backwards for our Fort Carson folks, you could read or not. <laughs> so anyway, so that, that's why it's on our website, not a, a joint land use study website. Thanks. 
Um, so next on uh, next in the packet, you'll you'll find that there's we've attempted to print out uh, the project schedule um, along the wall uh, over here. You may have noticed that we have it uh, in large format here on the right side. And so if if you want to, if you hadn't looked at it before the meeting, we have that up there in detail. If you want to look at it just to get a better sense, um, this is the schedule as of right now. Now we. Once we start opening up um, and looking at adding Shriver, there may be some, some modifications to that schedule in terms of how much time it, we think it may take or additional tasks that may come into play with uh, focused on Shriver. And also as we move forward, if, uh, when we come back with the uh, public information, the results of surveys and, and public feedback, um, we should have a better sense if there's some issues that may require additional study and therefore we need to uh, extend certain portions of this. But overall, at this point, uh, with the, under the current grant, um, we are good through Aug uh, the end of August 2017 um, with the anticipation that that could be extended a few months uh, with the addition of Schriever. Um, so the, the, the schedule is currently in your packets. And, and if anyone, um, uh, yeah, so if anyone after the meeting, feel free to take a look at the schedule up there and then ask Angela and I any questions you may have about when certain things may occur or if there's anything that uh, you're uncertain what, what that task means. Um, and in terms of the schedule, uh, let me get this up here. So you can all read that, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's why we print the wall size version. <laughs> yeah, if you cross your eyes, it forms an image. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so also in your packets after the schedule, you'll see the list of our anticipated uh, Joint Land Use Study Technical Committee meetings. Um, as uh, We're expecting that the Technical Committee will meet um, in general every other month. Um, the reason why we anticipated that we should meet again in April was that since we are getting things started up uh, and the, this next policy committee meeting will be after uh, April, it will be in May, uh, we thought that April would be a good opportunity to um, maybe identify some potential working groups uh, to get started and recommend uh, to the policy committee for approval so that they can start studying some of these issues. So um, that's sort of going to be the main focus of our meeting on April 7th. Um, and then also you'll notice, for the most part, we, we are planning to meet uh, here in the, in the main conference room. If it makes sense to, of course, meet elsewhere, we can certainly do that. And we will have to determine a location for our August meeting because um, this room will be unavailable during that. But we can approach that at a later date when we have uh, the technical committee more formalized. So just to keep in mind, Overall, we're anticipating that during the course of this study, there will be a total of 10 technical committee meetings. Now, of course, if the working groups are working hard on something and there isn't anything to meet about at that point in time, naturally we'll cancel that meeting and uh, we don't need to meet for the sake of meeting. We're going to try and make sure that these meetings really are worth your while and are getting down to the brass tacks with this study. So um, uh, that's that. And now the other thing is um, if we find that this meeting time is not convenient. Um, obviously, today we had we didn't have a quorum. Uh, we want to make sure that this is as convenient for as many members as possible. So, if there if there are some conflicts and we're seeing regular conflicts, we made it a look at examining a better time. Uh, and so, I just want to throw that that out there. But in theory, this has seemed to be, from what we could tell, what would work for most people. Obviously, if you can't make it, please send someone in your place just so that you can get uh, have be represented. And with that, um, we have uh, the upcoming survey. Uh, let's see, I can, uh, Angela can talk about that briefly. Or I think one of the main needs, we're, we're still formulating the survey as um, Rachel mentioned with the public communication and the three aspects that we'll be doing, we'll be doing a telephone town hall, we'll be doing some community meetings and then we will have an interactive website mapping 
survey available also. To get the word out on those three mechanisms, uh, or two at least, on the telephone town hall one just generates phone numbers, but on the other two, we really need some help from all of you in the sense that you know who your neighbors are, you know who your neighborhood associations are, you know maybe some avenues of getting a hold of people in your communities. And so we, once we get the consultant on board, either they or PP, someone from PPACG will be contacting you. I happen to know the city of Colorado Springs has uh, a nice database of all the neighborhood associations, so we'll be looking at contacting. Um, we've requested they provide those GIS layers to us, and then we'll be looking at contacting each of the neighborhood associations and looking to them to get the word out. So in this case, I'm not sure of what the other counties have available, those type of things, but we'd love to discuss that with you and look at avenues for um, getting as big of a um, broad brush uh, with all of the communities. In saying that, too, we're also going to, if it's possible, and you have a room on your website, maybe on the front page, to just put a small um, blurb about the survey that's uh, open and how long the survey will be open, those type of things. I think that if each community um, takes, um, takes some piece of this, um, Teller County had even told us, too, that you know, even to mention it at a lot of the public meetings, those type of things, that would be a good way to get the word out. Um, so we'll be working with you here in the very near future to help us do a lot of um, the community outreach in that sense. Any questions in regards to that? Okay. Or ideas how to outreach to your folks and you know, your constituency? That's an answer, yeah, it would be good, be one way to do it, but I'd like to get my community engagement manager involved. Right. Okay. Please do. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. So with that, uh, briefly we'll return to the technical committee roster. Um, this, of course, is uh, what we have at this point. Um, <clears throat> give it some thought, or if you have any uh, people on the technical committee roster, that um, any entities that you feel would be... Uh, be helpful, um, then uh, you know, we should certainly discuss that uh, if there's someone that's not at the table or would be valuable. Um, at this point, as Angela mentioned before, there will be some additional, um, some additional uh, uh, people that, uh, or entities that may be represented on here later. Uh, so just keep that in mind and uh, in the next couple weeks if you think of anyone or, or want to see how someone may fit into this process. Um, we can kind of help you identify that would be someone good for a working group or maybe that would be someone good for the technical committee. Uh, any questions on any of that? Okay. With that, uh, with every meeting, we'll also, this is, next is an opportunity for um, both the installations and community to, you know, talk about, if you have something that's going on in your community that uh, relates to this study or you think may be pertinent, um, we'll start off with the installations. Uh, anyone from the installations have anything to report related to land use efforts or anything? No? Not at this point? No annexations yet? <laughs> Wait, you don't annex. What's everybody looking at us for? <laughs> Any installations incorporating as a city? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, we already are a city. Okay, good. Um, do you have, have, then, uh, do you have one comment? Oh, yeah. So I guess and we aren't added yet. Shriver's not added yet to the to officially to the to the uh, JLUS. Yet. But when we do, I guess I'm assuming when you guys come out, you'll kind of. I guess we'll, we'll have to go through the matrix there and decide what additional things need to be done. At that point, I'm assuming. Or and I'm you assuming can bring you can bring the issues now. Yeah, we're we're willing to just uh, we're, we're we figured that we might as well just uh, engage you as if you're part of the process because a lot of it's preliminary and we, we just, because we don't know, we'd rather go through the process and find out in the rare chance that you don't get added right. and then just stop the effort there than, than have to start up late in the process. So we've, we were just going to assume that you're part of it that's and just operate as such. Okay, that's probably what we'll do is we'll make sure we have our concerns at least and we'd like to certainly hear any other concerns that are out there for the, for the property and all that. 
um, and then go through when you do come out. I guess you're coming out. I think you come out in April. Is that right? Um, I think Something so. Like that? I believe so. Yes. And then we'll maybe get a chance to talk more in detail about kind of more specific things that need to be done, so that maybe with the hope we don't necessarily have to extend the uh, the study because of us or whatever. We can get them all all that all those things wrapped up within the time frame. I don't know. Okay. So I just had a, a couple of comments. Um, you know, we, we interact with the, the Garden Reserve. Uh, they usually have assets. Um, they have some assets on Fort Carson, some enclaves. Uh, but I'm aware they have other um, enclaves uh, in the, in the uh, private sector, I guess, if you will, you know, through GSA leases and whatnot. Now, I don't know if the Air Force is the same as us, but we have, there's an effort uh, for, uh, for these entities to get out of those leases downtown. Like we have Space and Missile Defense is trying to get on Fort Carson. We're looking for headquarters for them. Um, and the uh, looking to get some more uh, Colorado Army National Guard and Reserve units onto Fort Carson that aren't currently, uh, you know, different uh, units that they're trying to station there. So, and I think there's impacts to the region as a whole as, as these entities are, 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 maybe they're trying to get on Peterson, but I don't think you guys have any, not even a, a, an available acre, right? So. That's what we tell everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, but we do, and we have a lot of, <coughs> lot of uh, units coming to us looking for space. Um, so I just throw that out there. I don't know if they should have a representative here. Is there transitioning from off post to on post somewhere? Uh, or it affects their enclaves? Um, I, I asked that question, absolutely. Because when we went through a lot of the previous JLA studies that have been done, um, they, some of them ha did have a guard component to them. And what the scope of the study is supposed, to, is supposed to cover is any guard activities that are tenants of any of the installations. So if you do have um, um, National Guard groups that are, or reserve groups, that are tenants of your installation, then we are to look at studying those impacts. If they are off installation, um, then they do not fall within the scope of the project. But, and then that kind of goes to maybe um, Glenn's question then too about like how far in the future are you supposed to go. If you have studies and um, a plan for bringing in some of those entities into your installation, then yes, we do probably want to study what the impacts of those will be once you bring them in. Um, so I think it's, it's, there's a little bit of a fine line there, but absolutely if they're operating from your installation, we do want to account for the impacts that they have. Or if they land in the communities, the communities may have an issue that they certainly could bring to the study because th th that's right. part I, of the plan as well. Uh, yeah. I think the trend is for them to get out of GSA leases uh, to, to save money. So they're looking at the various installations for for availability, so you guys are probably running. Oh, yeah, quite yeah. Well, so. okay. I know the state, you know, Department of uh, Military Veterans Affairs with, with Greg Dorman on that, that issue's got to be addressed through that as well. So maybe we can talk to Greg about, is there someone technically that's looking at that? So I think we can take a peek and, uh, you know, we can add it. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's okay to add. It's just how far we go with it, we're not sure. Whether it's an installation or community or both or a state level. They say they have it covered. We may report back whatever they say. And and one thing. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, and one thing that uh, over the course of this study that we're going to be looking at is, you know, there's a lot of different impacts in the area from various different types of operations. And one of the things we've learned so far is that um, some of those may be uh, units that are visiting from other parts of the country that are temporarily using say, Fort Carson or other for their training operations. Now, of course, the public doesn't always realize uh, who is technically creating the impact, and therefore we may get some feedback where we're having to determine who is it that's 
technically causing that impact. It could be someone that is off base. We can at least through this study identify it and then perhaps if it's not within the scope of the study, at least recommend something for it to be studied further in the future. So that may also help out with that particular issue. Yeah, I think Dan mentioned that at the last meeting with the Hammond. Yes. Yeah. What about having um, Springs Airport representative here? You know, on a tech committee working with both because they've got some major development plans south and along Powers Corridor and coming up towards us that could potentially affect Carson with the ADAG and all that kind of stuff. Yep, and and they are actually listed on on this, but uh, I, their representative was not at the very bottom. Uh, their representative oh, from the FAA, Colorado Springs Airport, was not able to make it. I think the, for the city of Car Springs, they'll be aware of those plans, but uh, I think the airport director may be a resource that comes to a working group. Yes. We're, we're slotting them in for a working group for now because they'll have a pretty discreet, you know, discussion versus the whole four counties. But that, they're, they're on the edge, so they, they may pump, bump up into this committee, but for now we just have them part of the working group. Okay. Does have one question. Um, so for things that go beyond, do go beyond what the study would be, uh, I guess do we have an idea of what, how we would handle things? Like, for instance, Shriver has quite a bit of property, and people are always looking to come out and do certain things. There's certain things that have come to us that certainly if, you know, if, uh, if, 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 they, or if it arrived there, people would want to know, and it could create an issue. So how would we handle those types of things after the study's over? The, the study and some of the strategies that hopefully will be laid out is that it won't just talk about how to handle some things that are currently within, pre, currently within the scope of the study, but hopefully we'll also set up um, some uh, connections, interconnections between communities, between military bases that may help facilitate issues that come up going forward. So that's part of the idea of this is that it, it uh, not only addresses current issues, but identifies a framework or um, interagency cooperation opportunities uh, or inter-installation community opportunities to address some of those issues that we just can't anticipate at this point. So that's something that we hope will kind of come out of this, uh, some of the relationships that will get built between all of you uh, through this process. And that may help to address that. So once you can identify that to this group, then we can move it forward to see if it's, you know, dealing with the county or uh, any other state agency or, or whatever, depending on the, the issue. Right. So this is the forum to, to bring them up. Right. Okay. With, with that, is there, I didn't see it in here, but is there a thought about the city of Pueblo and the, and the Air Force presence at the Pueblo Airport down there? That is, I mean, I don't know how long it's going to last, but is that part of the thought process? To a absolutely. Talked a lot about that. Yeah, right. absolutely. Because uh, we, we understand that um, there's uh, certainly a relationship between the Air Force Academy and the DOS program at Pueblo Airport, and that's something where um, we're going to be looking at it from the standpoint of just where are the flights going and, and looking at if they are causing, if there is some kind of issue that's arising from it. Um, if they're doing some operations that aren't really creating uh, uh, an impact, then we'll, we'll recognize that, but it, it's only going to be looking at it if there are actual uh, compatibility issues. But we are well aware of uh, well, the extensive activity of Pueblo Airport. And that's one thing, too, we'll be doing at the next meeting. Uh, Tom sitting in the back there is currently in the process of, since we've obtained um, Air Force Academy data and some Fort Carson data, we'll be looking at all the flight patterns and assigning ownership to those patterns um, within the, the four-county area. And so we'll be looking to all of you for your help in doing that so that we know where the flights, who the flights belong to, basically, because I think one thing we've learned in the first uh, few months of this project is that if it, there's a plane in the sky, it has to be the Air Force Academy. And if there's a helicopter in the sky, it has to be Fort Carson's. And obviously that's not necessarily true at all. So, so that's kind of one of the first steps, too, is figuring out whose flights are whose, whether they're DOS flights from Pueblo or they're, yeah, you know. Wait till they, they start seeing UAVs flying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll assign those to Peter's. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is, that is a next step, too, in which we'll be engaging everyone here in April to start looking at those flights and also with their 
are flights that the communities are aware of that maybe aren't shown on the map, um, bringing those to the table, those type of things. So we'll try to get that information out to you prior to the meeting so you have some time to look at it and kind of um, give it some thought. And then we'll have probably a considerable amount of discussion on that next month too. And, and also I think we anticipate that that discussion will occur within the, idea, the, the framework of possibly setting up uh, a working group to study that because that's certainly something that we think may require a lot of study with the airspace congestion issues in the area potentially and again with some of the um, you know, uh, noise or, or flight pattern, uh, there will be a group that can kind of work on that potentially. So um, that, that may be the, uh, you may see an item on the list that may be saying um, airspace or flight or something, working group, and that will be the context in which we can discuss that. Yeah. This kind of goes along with the lieutenant colonel's uh, question, but so after this study is over, um, are we anticipating this type of forum continuing because we don't want to go through all this hard work and figure out all these issues and maybe we resolve some of them during this time frame, but we're going to continue having issues for years and years, so do we anticipate uh, this kind of forum after the study? And, and that's the thing that will, uh, to some extent, be up to you guys in terms of what to recommend at the end of the study. There's a number of different strategies, and in other JLS studies that have been done, you, in some cases, we see communities or regions that have formed some kind of working group that continues to meet after the study is done. In other cases, there may be some forum that exists already where they can kind of take on that task and move forward with strategies. Um, the documents... The, the JLS document will at the end, now the document's non-binding. That's another thing to keep in mind with this, is it's non-binding. It's intended to be sort of a good faith effort to try and figure out ways to um, uh, address these issues. But in the end, there will be some strategies where it may make sense for um, uh, a strategy to be adopted by a particular community or a particular installation to move forward on something. Or it may be a strategy that says, uh, the installation and these communities should meet up to discuss issues. Um, we realize that there's um, certain working groups that are around with the military, uh, the uh, front range uh, encroachment management team, we know that that exists out there. And so part of that may be uh, what, what role can they play in the future, and that may be something that can be studied in the future. So, yeah, they're, they're, the idea is that this doesn't just get made and put on the shelf but it has some strategies and a, a way forward to actually uh, implement those strategies or address these issues in the future, even after this particular project is, is, is completed. Right. And Ryan, so do you see a list of developable, or I mean like projects, you know, opportunities uh, for development arising out of some of the things that we talk about in here? For instance, like, a, you know, we've talked about uh, a second rail uh, uh, egress from Fort Carson out of the Nixon power plant area going south. Um, the lady from Fountain, when she, when she came to one of our uh, visioning groups, was talking about that. There, there's some effort ongoing. I don't know if anybody here knows about that. But the idea is to, to be able to, to move uh, military cargo by train out of that area. Um. Yeah, I know on the committee we have Springs Utilities, I bet they would comment on that vision. Uh, so yeah, those ideas is, is what we want to hear to, to, mm -hmm. to document through here and, and then follow up, you know, maybe <coughs> Springs Utilities or is, that a, is there a fatal flaw analysis someone's doing with that or <clears throat> is it going to get some study in the future? Because that could be, <clears throat> excuse me, a recommendation from you all up to the policy committee to say, Let's look at that and then fill in the blanks of why should we look at it, who's going to look at it. So things can spin out of here up through the policy committee. Now, what I talked with OEA in the last few days, a lot of their joint land use study policy committees, they turn into implementation committees. So the simple thing we talked about earlier, the website not being standalone and doesn't get any love any, anymore, it's going to be on our website. So they want the continuity. And so it'll be up to your recommendation in the policy committee to, to decide, do they go into implementation committee or do they spin it off and say, this group in the community is already looking at that, so let's let them have all our information, keep looking at it, and then they own that issue. 
Uh, we did that with the Fort Carson Growth Plan. We spun off about everything into the community because that wasn't our mission here at the Council of Governments. We do transportation, but the rest, <coughs> excuse me, they, you know, they wanted to spin off into the community. So I would imagine it could go that way, but again, we don't know. We're, we're just at the beginning. But I think the, the goal is to have the issues continue. And, you know, I, I personally hate plans. They sit on shelf. It's like, well, that's nice. Uh, we spend a lot of time and effort getting those things. So let's do the implementation piece. And so I, I would imagine it will continue in some fashion. Again, right now I can't tell you until we get to the end of that, uh, you know, uh, the calendar on the wall, that schedule, which we know is going to change. We know it's wrong. But some of the issues may resolve, you know, like the Monument Creek study. They're going to have recommendations in, you know, months, not years. And so as issues come up, we may have recommendations from you all to the policy committee. Let's do the following, turn it over to the Monument Creek folks to go solve something. So it, it'll, it, it'll go as it goes. I mean, we just don't know the, the outcome just yet. Okay, with that, um, uh, we have a large. <laughs> <Boston here. laughs> um, with that, uh, the community members, um, uh, do you have any land use, uh, you know, kind of efforts or anything going on that may be relevant to this process you'd like to discuss here at this forum? This time? Not this time? Okay. It's my, ours are minor. We had a petition for exclusion that's changing some of our boundaries, but not much. Okay. Not significant. Okay. Is that after the name change? I was going to ask the same thing. <laughs> yeah. like, we don't like Pueblo. <laughs> You're just going to be West. I'll leave that, I'll leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> I'll think you will. As long as they don't, yeah. Dan is trying, trying to secede down there. <laughs> we all read the papers, so. <laughs> Let us know if you're applying for statehood. That's the. <laughs> All right. With that, um, if, if no one has anything additional, we'll adjourn for the moment. Um, I enjoyed being the chair and vice chair this time, and uh, next time we'll uh, think about who to take my place. And so Brian, I can hand the baton off. Yeah, it'll have to be someone that is actually a member of the committee and not myself in the future. So. Uh, you cannot nominate me. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming. and uh, Thanks again. We'll, and, uh, yeah, you, go you've got the contact information, so if things come, you know, 3 in the morning or next week, send an email to any of us. Uh, we'll get it in. Eventually, it'll be an interactive website. You can drop comments there, but uh, once we get them here, we can share with the group. We don't have to wait till the next meeting. So, look forward to it. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, that's where he was like, I have so many opportunities to help out.